and welcome back, Pilot Alexander. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, Karim. Everything is fine. Uh, <laughs> Spend the day with you, so it can be, uh, <laughs> it can be only uh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can say the same. Thank you. Uh, of course, big up to Captain Joe. Oh, yep. Captain Joe. And look. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> go and love her. Yep. That's for all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, loving Airbus doesn't mean we don't love uh, Boeing as well. Right? Absolutely. It's great aircraft. And yesterday I published this. Um, Triple seven photo that I took before our takeoff. Beautiful, beautiful photo. With the GE nineteen. Absolutely, triple seven is amazing, and that's a confession. Eh? It's one of the aircraft that I would like to fly, especially the X. Maybe one day. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> All right, back to another aviation knowledge video. Yes. With another interesting topic to talk about, the RVSM. Absolutely. So this series is very casual. Eh? As you can see, there is not much of, a of pre preparation and. Uh, editing so we uh, just it's more of a discussion right. absolutely it's a discussion so what is the rvsm uh, let's start what does it stand for please topic topic is rvsm so uh, it's it stands for uh, reduce vertical separation minimum all right and um, what is it exactly so it is any airspace or route between level 290 290 Sorry, I'm just used to it, 290s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's between 290 and 410 included or inclusive, uh, in which the aircrafts are separated by a thousand feet instead of the regular 2,000 feet. All right, and why do you think we need to reduce the vertical separation between aircrafts? Look, the aviation industry worldwide is growing and uh, the need of flying is growing, therefore you will need to accommodate within one airspace more aircrafts than before. So before you could, 2,000 feet between uh, each aircraft what was enough because finally you didn't have that many aircrafts flying. Sure. Where today you have thousands of aircrafts flying every day, therefore you will need to reduce the separation between them in order to accommodate all of them in the sky. Okay, I understand. And um, tell me, can all aircrafts fly within this uh, RBSM airspace? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> and the, the reason is that um, it requires certain certifications. So it requires certifications from, from, from uh, GAA, YASA. It requires uh, certification from FAA. It requires certifications uh, from the um, Aviation Authority of uh, the registration country of the aircraft. So where the aircraft is registered, the, authority, the Aviation Authority has to provide you with the, with the certification that you can fly with this aircraft uh, in RVSM uh, airspace. And of course, the aircraft has to be capable of flying within the, the RVSM airspace as it requires certain equipments, certain functions uh, for it to be there. All right, uh, you just mentioned certain uh, equipments, such as what, to be honest? Well, look, you will need definitely two independent uh, altimeters. Okay. That, that is for sure. You will need an autopilot. Uh, Autopilot. I know certain aircraft they they don't have uh, an autopilot for vertical and horizontal, so it's it has to be uh, autopilot with the vertical uh, hold capability. I would say you need uh, an altitude deviation uh, alerting system. So you you need to have a function that can alert you in case you are deviating from a certain certain altitude. I would say okay. to a, up to a certain altitude. Uh, from uh, your assigned level. You will, you will need a transponder MOTSI and you will need two long range navigation systems such as uh, GPS, INS, IRSs, etc. Uh, etc. Et okay. okay, and now specifically to the Airbus A380, I will show you uh, the equipments and functions needed uh, to fly within RVSM airspace. Okay. So, look, um, uh, opening the FCOM, Flight Crew Operating Manual. Uh, of the Airbus A380 and I will go to procedures, special operations and here we have RVSM. So required equipment and functions. The RVSM regulation requires that the following equipment or functions be operative. So two ADRs, one transponder, one autopilot function, two PFDs and uh, one AF AFC uh, control panel channel or AFC control panel backup and uh, one um, flat warning system, so the altitude alert function that we spoke about earlier. And uh, within the RVSM airspace, Karim, you have um, maximum difference altitude between the indicators, so between the altimeters. And you have to check that you are within 
this limit and I'll put you the table here. So you can see this is a limit at all the altitudes from the ground up to the to flight level 410. All right, now we come to my last and interesting question. What happens if an aircraft fails actually to adhere with these requirements you just mentioned earlier while actually flying within this airspace? Mm -hmm. So while flying, so first of all, you should not arrive to that situation. Okay. okay, of course, it's an emergency or an abnormality, I would say. So in order to avoid that, you should check from the ground during the flight before reaching RVSM airspace, while entering RVSM airspace, while in the RVSM airspace, that you, uh, you are capable of being there, of course. After the flight, you should report it also uh, for the other crew to know. So look, it, it, it is very straightforward. You are within an RVSM airspace. It, it is more about the ADC than about the pilots. Of course, the pilots are responsible also. But um, the ATC uh, is managing all the aircraft uh, separation, right? So you've got to tell them if you are not able, if you are uh, not capable of uh, flying within 1,000 feet from another aircraft, you should absolutely and immediately notify them. So this is the first thing to do. So uh, look, I will read it to you. Abnormal and emergency procedures, ATC notify. When the aircraft is in RVSM airspace, the flight crew must notify the ATC of the following situation because they may affect the aircraft's ab ability to maintain the flight level. So in case you have a failure of both autopilots, the loss of altimeter system redundancy, an excessive discrepancy in altitude indications, and no way to identify which one of the indicator is uh, valid, the failure of any other equipment that affects the aircraft's ability to maintain the flight level, and in case you encounter uh, of greater than moderate turbulence. Now I have a question for you, Karim, and a question for you guys as well. Go ahead, please. So within the RVSM airspace, you are assigned to certain levels, to certain directions. Okay, when you're flying um, from a heading north, 360 to 179 uh, degrees, so you're flying from west to east, you fly on? Odd flight levels. Odd flight levels, absolutely. So it starts at 290. Now when you fly from 180 degrees, to 359 degrees, so you're flying from east to west, you fly on? Uh, even. Even flight levels, absolutely. And it starts from level 300. So I'm flying from Doha to Frankfurt, for example, and we have uh, a malfunction that uh, does not let us fly within the RVSM airspace. So we notify the ADC, and the ADC controller tells us, climb. At which altitude can we climb? Do you have well, an idea, Karim? I would fly up to 430. Okay, 430. No, why not 42? Because it's correct, by the way, what you said. But, but why not 420? Because actually, you need to clear the uh, 410 traffic who are still in RVSM by 2000 feet. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you have an airplane passing that is at level 400 from east to west. And you have another airplane passing from west to east at level 410. So the next level with the 430 as 2,000 feet has to be the minimum separation between the, the RVSM airspace and the aircraft that is outside. So 430, and actually the A380 can fly uh, 430 as the maximum setting is 431. Oh, which is great. wonderful. But is you've, got, you've got airplanes flying above that. Oh, okay. really? Yes, you've Up got airplane. You've got, depends on the aircraft, actually. You've got some fighter jets and you've got other air, air, civilian aircraft that fly very high for five, for seven, for nine, five zero, five one. I would yeah, by the way, you mentioned five one. I know the Gulfstream G500 flies up to five one zero. Have you seen the aircraft? It's magnificent. It's just amazing. So the, it's, that's a, the, the last born of the Gulfstream family, the, five, the Gulfstream Earth. 500 and 600. It is the most advanced aircraft ever. It is just so amazing. And it flies up to five, uh, 50, uh, level 510. I cannot even say it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the Mac, but it's something like uh, 92% or 91% of the speed oh. of sound. It's beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful machine. That's it, Karim. <laughs> thank you so much for your uh, explanation. Thank you, thank you very uh, much, Karim. Thank you, guys. I hope you learned something, uh, RVSM, today. So we didn't want to go too much into details because it is very, very, very heavy. Indeed. So that's... Good information for you. <laughs> Thank you and see you next time. Thank you very much. Cheers.